Hey everybody, welcome to Marvel Champions Monthly, a fan podcast about the card game Marvel Champions designed by Caleb Grace and Michael Boggs at Fantasy Flight Games. I'm your host, Kenny Hawk. I have all three co-hosts with me here today. So we have Adderkop. How's it going, Adderkop? Pretty good. Glad to be um, here recording again today, actually. Yeah, we're not playing Hulks this time. We're not There's... losing with Hulks this time. Spoiler alert. Regrettable. We have Crimson. How's it going? Hey, it's going, going, going. And we have Americano. How's it going, everybody? It's going pretty swell. This is just one day after the big The Mad Titans Shadow announcement. So anybody want to overview what was announced um, by FFG yesterday? Yeah, I can do a quick little rundown for it. Um, So there's an article that just came up. Um, It is about Titan's Shadow. If you don't know the Titan they're referring to, it's Thanos. Um, This box has been kind of like teased on the horizon for a while. We knew that it was going to be something to do with Thanos and his, uh, his gang, the Black Order. And uh, as of right now, we have some news about it. So we have um, the first dual villain scenario, which is uh, Proxima Midnight and Corvus Glaive. Um, We also have uh, Ebony Maw, who's been sort of become like the group uh, wizard. (laughs) And uh, Thanos, as well as the two heroes that are in the box, box, which is um, Monica Rambeau Spectrum and uh, Adam Warlock. So it kind of rounds out the. Uh, Guardian's theme that we've been uh, going through with his last cycle. So it, it fits pretty well. I'm pretty psyched. Both the heroes look good. We get more leadership cards, just what we needed. Didn't have those in a while. We're not talking about those today or anything, right? So We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in the future sometime. Uh, the other takeaway is that Spectrum is, in a way, the first hero with three separate forms. That are all hero forms, I guess, right? To clarify, not like Wasp or Ant Man. So uh, we're going to save some of it, obviously, for the future. But um, in the meantime, check out the article, and you'll see what I mean. We'll throw a link to the article in the show notes too. It's probably more exciting than us. So <laughs> yeah, this is also not super important, but I really like the color scheme on her part. That like, is important. The artistic value is amazing. What are the what are the colors? What She's got? got like a black, white, and gold like color scheme in her boxes and stuff, and they just make the cards look crisp. And her headshot doesn't look scary like rockets, so that's great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, what that's that's definitely true. That's the most important thing, actually. That's what you look at on every card, right? So it's, it's kind of true. Is, is, will the face scare the children? Is the question. Yes. Yes. And it doesn't. It doesn't here. All right, well, today we're going to talk about two other faces, well, at least one face, hopefully, that won't scare the children, and we're going to do an episode where we talk about both Star-Lord and Gamora, because they've been promising a dual-pack release since, I don't know, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and it finally happened. We got Star-Lord and Gamora two weeks ago. We've all had time to at least play or dabble into those cards, so we're going to talk about both of those heroes' kits and the cards that come in their packs and give those cards a grade on some sort of grading scale, obviously from like A to A, because they're both great heroes. Spoiler but first. Yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, they're just going to turn off the episode now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tune out. It's boring now. Um, but not yet, because we're going to do a new segment. Adderkop is going to talk about Marvel Comics and what's going on recently for exactly one minute. So, go. <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, the last couple weeks for Marvel, we've had uh, Heroes Reborn has progressed, and so now we're four issues into it. Uh, things are getting a lot weirder. I don't want to spoil anything about it, but the thing that makes this world uh, kind of strange is revealed in this week. So if you're at all interested in the current Marvel event, it's done in, again, seven weeks. Um, you can get on it now. I'm sure that your, your, uh, your preferred mode of getting the comics still has all the issues in stock. Uh, Beta Ray Bill, uh, episode, or, uh, issue four just came out. It continues to kill... Um, it's got some of the highest ratings on uh, all different comics rating sites. So if you do yourself a favor. It's a mini series. It's only six parts. Uh, it's really good. Also, Hulk Time of Monsters is a one shot. If you're not reading Hulk, check it out. Um, there's a story from Mesopotamia and a horror story by Kevin Nolan, who is a legendary horror artist. Do yourself a favor and pick it up. Bang. One minute. Nailed it. That's impressive. Thanks. I'll, I'll say. That's a lot of different comics. I'm reading 
free fall, Hawkeye free fall at your at your suggestion. You did it. You did as it. you should because it is good. It's it's it, really it good. It is hilarious. Um, <laughs> it is it's so hilarious actually. So if you hate Hawkeye, thank you for the recommendations. If you hate Hawkeye, read Free Fall. If you love Hawkeye, read Free Fall. <laughs> <laughs> I finally picked up my Heroes Reborn one through three, and I'll get four tomorrow. I had been delinquent at the comic store for like six weeks, so it was an embarrassingly large pile of things that I had to pick up. But they're all here now, so um, I've gotten over that hump. That's good. By the hear All right. On to topic. Real topic one, Star-Lord. So, Americano, you wanted to overview Star-Lord, what he's all about, and then we'll go through our favorite cards and um, maybe some strategy and play tips for the leader of the Guardians. Go. I know, su- surprising, right? Because he's a leadership hero because of leadership. Um, no, so, Star-Lord, Peter Quill, he has, on his alter ego side, three recovery, he's outlaw traded, and he has a setup ability that you search your deck and discard pile for a copy of the element gun upgrade and add it to your hand, and then shuffle your, shuffle your deck. Um, it says a copy because I, he has two copies of the element gun um, that are the... They do the same thing. Um, we'll talk about that in a second, but his he has an ability smooth talker. It's an action. Choose a card in your hand. Swap that card with the top card of your deck. And then He's got a uh, hand size of 6, 10 hit points. And on the Star-Lord side, 2 thwart, 2 attack, 1 defense. So pretty good stats. Pretty good stat line. Uh, he's Guardian traded. Uh, each ally you control gains the Guardian trait, which is super helpful um, to, for the cards uh, that, he, that come in his uh, kit. And then he has the ability, what could go wrong? Interrupt. This is the probably the number one thing. I think uh, makes Star Lord Star Lord. When you could play a card from your hand, deal yourself one face down encounter card. Arrow reduce the resource cost to play that card by three. Limit once per round, and his hand size is five. So, if you haven't noticed, he's got several things going on. Um, smooth talker on the alter ego side. He's got his uh, his allies are going to get gain the guardian trait, and then he's gets encounter cards and allows you to play heroic even when you're not playing heroic. Um, kind of. So those are the those are his you know his base card. He's got Nova Prime as an ally, a five cost ally, two thwart, three attack. Aerial and Nova Core trait three health and a response. After you play Nova Prime from your hand, defeat a non elite minion. So the crew over at Critical Encounters, um, their, you know, uh, homebrew stuff. Don't they have a lot of elite uh, minions in there? Homebrew stuff, I think. I don't know. They uh, love playing against Nova Prime because they are immune to him. Um, he's got some... He, Star-Lord's all about this, this gambling mentality. High risk. Uh, for a payoff, it's 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 the law of the harvest, but it's like the negative law of the harvest. If that makes sense. What's the law of the harvest? So, um, you plant fruit or vegetables or whatever in your garden or a field, and you don't see anything. You don't see the you don't reap the benefits of that for the entire year, basically until until it's time to harvest in the fall. At least here. <laughs> Um, if you plant, you put all this work in the front end for nothing, and then at the in the back end you get all this harvest. It's almost a reverse. You you get this benefit immediately for a discounted card, and then you reap a negative effect from getting an additional encounter card. Um, so it's really fun to play Star Lord when you decide to use his ability. It's not fun then during the villain phase when you have to reap that <laughs> slap in the face. Or, Unless you drew extra cards, then it was all worth it. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I mean, I, I found with Star Lord, I, I'll get into some of his other cards too. I mean, he's got Daring Escape, which has to deal with it, it, it's a zero cost event. 
dealing yourself a face down encounter card and then reading your hero and then drawing a card. So it's a, it's got that cantrip ability. Um, but reading your hero and then you might say, why would you want to do that? Give yourself a face down encounter card. Well, you have sliding shot, for example, as his big event a, a, attack event. Uh, it's a three cost event, and you can only play it if you control an element gun. So, hence the starting setup ability. And uh, it says, hero action attack, deal five damage to an enemy. Deal two additional damage to the enemy for each face down encounter card in front of you. So, it's a unique card that gets stronger um, as you have more encounter cards in front of you, which is really fun because he's sliding into more danger. There's no um, limit. That's pretty sweet. There, there is no limit. I mean, you might want to limit yourself, but as long as is, you win, you don't got to flip him over, right? I mean, I guess that's true <laughs> if you can, yeah, on the final stage of the villain, right? Um, that's a solid plan, honestly. I mean, Star Lord plan. So, for is, sure. is there a way? Is there a way to deal from other like other players to deal encounter cards to teammates? Um, Not yet. No, no, but there's no. villains, right? When you flip Green Goblin to stage three, you get yep. three encounter cards dealt to you. <laughs> okay. So if okay. you do that, you can just go bonkers. Um, he's got I deal like gun- cards to Addercop all the time, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. What do you think I'd get an extra card to you? Um, And then he's putting the card in front of me. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm doing <laughs> Yeah, I guess I don't have a choice. Uh, He's got the element gun, which is cool. It's a tech weapon upgrade, three cost. Um, he's got two of them, which makes sense, right? Uh, it's restricted, and it has a hero action attack. Exhaust element gun and spend one resource of any type. Deal three damage to an enemy. This attack gains piercing. I'm not super impressed, honestly, by the effect of the card. It's kind of meh, but uh, I mean, let's be real. You're, I, I really you can like get this card, card out for free. Yeah, I really like the card. It, the three cost is a little disconcerting on getting the second one out, but yeah. I think it's actually yeah, that think once you get the three cost paid for, it's super efficient. Yeah, right? it, three it is super piercing. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's got a ton of cards that cost three plus. I think he's got eight in his kit, so you have plenty of targets for his ability. The most disappointing thing to me is in the comics, he can like change what elements are shooting out of it, and there's like right. nothing about that in the theme. It's just like pay money, deal damage. It's well, an attack thing. In the in the piercing, it kind of implies that, right? Because you can change it to the element that you're going to have trouble with. I I, I do think yes, but I think it's a missed opportunity because they even put exhaust element going to spend one resource of any type. Yeah, um, it could have had made a it different effect based on the resource type that you play. Kind of, yeah. I mean, that would have been a way. Yeah, for like, the the type of if you spent energy, yeah. it gained piercing. If you spent uh, physical it gained an extra damage yeah. if you Smash. yeah yeah i get i definitely i understand that, that it, yeah it could have been better for sure but i think if you've spent science it untapped <laughs> <laughs> i think it's not a complete theme with because he, he always uses it to like get out of a situation yeah and i was gonna say despite that like they don't show us that in the movies at all and um in even in the comics as of recently like it used to be like a big thing in the comics and nowadays he's just like Blasting people, right? So um, it starts blasting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the Star Lord meme. <laughs> He's so anyway. I start blasting. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's see what other cards do I want to highlight. The the leader of the Guardians. It's a three cost upgrade. That's a title. Each Guardian character you control gains plus one thwart. And obviously, when he's on hero, the hero side, um, each ally he controls gains the Guardian trait. So. Um, that's super helpful um, because of some of the upgrades, the leadership upgrades that come in his kit. But I'll say the this last card I want to point out is the one cost upgrade, Star Lord's helmet, armor, and tech traded. While you are in hero form, you get plus one hand size for each face down encounter card in front of you to a maximum of plus three hand size. Um, I'll I'll say I feel like. I really like this card, but the more I thought about it afterwards, I feel like I it's almost a trap, almost, or kind of is, because I felt like I wanted to use his ability 
ability like every turn to get that plus one hand size to ensure that I was going to get six hand size instead of five. Does that make sense? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Um, well, uh, if you don't necessarily need the three cost discount, you're just giving yourself an encounter card for one extra card. You're just living and, it and up. And so, <laughs> what? You're just living it up. That's all. You just just. I mean, I didn't say that it, it's not thematic, <laughs> right? Um, I actually really like the design of the card, but I felt like when I was playing him, I wanted to do it every single time, and that's the tricky part with him. Maybe maybe they want when they designed it, they were intending. Everyone to do it because he has got how many? <laughs> how many three plus cost cards does he have? Eight. Like eight. eight. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, so you're definitely gonna be plus tempted to do it. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I, I mean, I love the card, but um, I would just suggest maybe think, maybe pause. Don't be like Star Lord and just maybe think. Give it a second thought. Don't play <laughs> thematically. That's what I just heard. <laughs> Give it a second thought. Yep. Although I think in Annihilation, his little subtitle was like Master Strategist. So let's think about that for a moment. I'm pretty sure they're using it ironically. Were they? I, I didn't read it that way. He uh, had a cool think, mechanical eye thing going on. It was crazy. I think I think Rocket is the team strategist. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. I... So so is there any are there any cards from the kit that you guys felt nailed it felt that, that they shouldn't be there or or that you wanted to talk about there's one card in the kit that kind of irritated me and that was air supremacy because unfortunately there's a couple allies that should have had uh ariel and did not like beta ray bill which i know kennedy had already said and i was like why why grumble grumble yeah those yeah. Are grumble. cards I'm like, leadership. I mean, I love Beta Ray Bill. I think that card is amazing. Yeah, he's pretty good. In Star Lord's kit, I don't know. I think they kind of nailed it. I mean, I like almost every card in his kit. The only one I don't like, which makes me really sad, is the Nova Prime Richard Ryder ally. I mean, he's great, but he's super situational, right? You have to have that. So he's a five cost ally, two thwart, three attack for one consequential with only three health. So if you're not using his ability, you're getting like six thwart for five cost. That's a real bad ratio. Yeah. Or nine damage for five cost. Also a really bad ratio. But his ability is after you play him from hand, defeat a non elite minion. So you just defeat it. Um, but you need a minion in play for that to be useful. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're. You're doing pretty poor with him. And even if you're going to use Star-Lord's Discount and pay two and get an encounter card, that encounter card is like a hefty price. I found that... Well, we'll talk about strategy with Star-Lord later, but I found the games that I'm successful with Star-Lord, I don't use his ability every turn. I use it, like you said, exactly when I need it and no more. Um, and the games that... I lose really horribly with Star Lord of the games where every turn I'm tempted and I'm like, ooh, look at this three cost ally I can play. <laughs> and then the treachery card I get is like, kill whatever you played. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Flip it over. Wait, you so take... you're telling me you have the Star Lord's helmet out and you're like, ooh, I want the extra card at the end of the round. So I'm going to use no, this. No, I'm, I'm saying, like, I look at my hand and I'm like, oh, I have a Helicarrier and an Avengers Mansion and, like, something else that's three costs. And I'm like, I could play all of these if I used his ability. So I use his ability and then I get the resources from the other ones and I put these three, like, locations down that all cost three plus. And then I get my two encounter cards and it's, like, caught off guard and discard a support <laughs> you control. And I'm like, you got to be joking me. <laughs> Every time. Yep, that's my law. When revealed, die. Oh, all right. When, when revealed, whatever nice thing you just played, discard it. That's what I feel like the cards <laughs> tell me. Yeah, I, I. So, looking over his kit, I, I do like his kit. Um, his his um, starter cards that came with him, his aspect cards. I, I like most of them. I really like Cosmos. Um, I was not a fan of the laser pistol target practice combo yet, but I think that has potential to be better as we get more cards. And I'm assuming we will get more weapon attachments for allies. I think I think uh, it's it's already pretty potent with a blaze of glory. It's a it's amazing with Yondu. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Yondu if you build, go ahead. Oh, I think if you build specifically to capitalize on on laser blaster and like you know that that normal like upgrade build with uh, target practice. 
and um and blades of glory you're looking at a ton of damage especially if you have like iron man on deck yeah it's, yeah. Uh, yeah just just earlier today i gave a laser pistol to iron man because i was face up and he was a guardian and then gave him a sky cycles because he's still on avenger and then blades of glory and really just went for it ripped like what 12 damage 10 damage math is tough Three blockers. Yeah. i, I yeah. think my issue is that there's it's the consistency you, you only have three laser pistols so i'd like to see one more moderately to low cost weapon attachment that can be attached to allies yep. and i i think at that point i would really look at making this kind of deck instead of just a an allies assemble go deck more yeah. of a um a pinpoint ally deck I'm going to read some of these cards just so people know what they are. So Laser Blaster is a one-cost upgrade attached to a Guardian ally, one per ally. Attached ally gets plus one attack, and its attacks gain overkill. Um, and then the other one you were talking about was Target Practice. What's surprising to me is this isn't an event. It's a zero-cost support. It's a skill. Yeah. Interrupt when an ally with a weapon upgrade atta- makes an attack, discard Target Practice to give that ally plus two attack. So it's nice, because you can just play this whenever. It costs nothing, right? So you just slap it on the table and wait until the combo is set up. And if you get caught off guard, shucks, I lost my target practice. It didn't cost It's an amazing much. card. So, so I, I might have been playing that card wrong. Yeah, if you, if you play it as an event like <laughs> I did in my first five games, it's a real bad <laughs> no, card. But then I when did. I read it and it said support, I was like, oh, this is good. Assumed it was an event. It nope. looks like an event, right? That's what I'm saying. Like it's, it, it waits and it's ready when you're ready. So it's easy exactly. to dig and find your blasters. I, yeah. So. I think you mentioned Blaze of Glory. That one was in the Star Lord preview article. It's kind of it feels like the Avengers assembled for Guardians. So it's, it's max one per round. Each Guardian character you get gets plus two thwart, plus two attack for the phase. At the end of the phase, deal one damage to each Guardian character. Oh, it's not even each Guardian character you control. It's each Guardian. So that's like all the other heroes that are Guardians as well. So how do we make Quicksilver a Guardian? Um, With uh, Star Lord on the table. Make the call no. the ally one from Scarlet Witch. Oops. Yeah. Are you talking? Are you talking about the ally? No, no, the hero. The hero? Oh, I don't think we can. But maybe in the future. We need an honorary maybe. guardian. My favorite thing with this is if you get like three or four, five, maybe even six allies out there, and they're all guardians from Star Lord's ability. Let's say you've just stolen a bunch of adventures to space to make them do things for you. You can blaze of glory them, and then if you flip to Peter Quill. You take away their guardian status and you basically strand them in space, but they don't have to take their damage at the end of the round then. So it's it's win win. You can they, cheat the do, damage away. When if you if you attach if you attach an Avenger traded or attach uh the laser blaster to somebody that doesn't have it printed and you flip this Peter Quill, does it do you have to discard the laser blaster? I don't think so because it says attach to. I don't check okay. Okay. And then the last one was Air Supremacy. So that's the aerial card for leadership. Hero action, choose X enemies, where X is the number of aerial characters you control. Deal three damage to each chosen enemy. Uh, pretty awesome card, really, for against anything that has like a lot of minions out there, if you can get the right aerial characters out. And that's the big problem, is there's not a ton of aerial allies. You're, you're stuck putting Sky Cycle on a bunch of people and playing with a very specific set of allies, but still it's, it's a non attack source of damage and it's a ton of damage. If you had four allies out there with Ariel and star Lord had Ariel, that's 15 damage for two cost. Nobody's going to complain about that. Right. Yeah, you just yeah. need to have the targets. Yeah. Just got to have the targets. Good thing. You're giving yourself extra encounter cards. <laughs> yes. Like with, uh, I think, I think you're actually incentivized to play Avengers with star Lord because you know, if you build the sky cycle, which requires Avengers, it uh, it makes you in a better position to play air supremacy. Uh, Blaze of Glory is the Avengers assemble basically, and you just ignore the downside by doing it up on doing it on a turn where you can fl- afford to flip down. Um, not to mention Triskelion, Avengers Tower. Uh, you can still benefit from nowhere because it doesn't have the stipulation that Avengers Tower has. Uh, yep. Yeah, like the he wants to be built with a bunch of Avengers and then you go super wide and you're like, all right, cool. Blaze of glory, sky cycles, everybody, everybody's dead. Everybody's dead. I think this is the most you can deal with a leadership deck. Like, <laughs> yeah, something crazy. I, like. I really like nowhere too. Nowhere is good. Yeah. Nowhere is play only if you have the guardian traits, increase your alley limit by one. After a player plays a guardian ally exhaust nowhere, that player draws a card. 
if you're Star Lord and you play Maria Hill, you get to draw two cards. That's pretty. That's pretty sweet. Pretty swag. Also, it it says the... after a player, not after you play. Yeah, it benefits everybody. That's nice. Well, uh, whoever that's... you pick. Yeah. 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 Really, I wasn't clear on if you if you're face up in Star Lord mode. If you play any ally, does it trigger? Can you trigger nowhere? I think the ruling I saw was yes. So Star Lord makes every ally you play trigger nowhere. Great. Yeah, because nowhere specifically says after a player plays a guardian. So the, the, the character would be in play and have the guardian trait before nowhere could trigger. That's a response. Yeah. Because, uh, because also, of the word after. Okay, cool. cool. It it's work, so it's going to work. It's going to work. <laughs> yeah. Did anyone right. else notice that the template for nowhere is different than Avengers Mansion? Really? Templating. Yeah, it's because that one is play only if you have the Avenger trait. And it's like comma, increase your ally limit by one or, or a semicolon or something. Uh, there's anyway. no clauses. They're, they're just periods, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Weird. Anyway, I saw that and I was like, oh man. And then <laughs> now I can't unsee it. Uh, I will say. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, before, before we go on, I'll say my favorite card from his 15 card kit is sliding shot um that's my favorite card it's weird it can cost you zero for seven damage like if you just have no other encounter cards in front of you before you play it because uh, three for five isn't very good but zero for seven is pretty good <laughs> um and zero for nine is even better uh anyway so i like that i want to try that where i end the game with sliding shot just sliding in for the final kill and you got to throw like a safe arms when you slide in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Has bad boy been effective for anybody? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I think if you if you activate his abilities and you have the helmet out to draw the extra cards, um, the first if, the first opportunity that you get to to pop bad boy, you end up with so many extra cards. Like you start your turn with you know eight nine cards in hand, and you, you're just you're ready to go bananas. Uh, space bananas. Okay. Because I've only hopefully seen it the, on paper. the main scheme's at zero. Yeah, what else would it be at? Yeah, you're playing I mean, justice, right? <laughs> your friends yeah. are carrying you, right? They just want to see you do something cool. <laughs> like your friends are carrying the board and they, they're yelling to you, like, do a backflip, and you're like, all right, cool. <laughs> Anybody have any other strategy tips or play tips for piloting Star Lord? Yes. Um, I've seen it a couple times with a couple different community members asking for help with Star-Lord, like, hey, I just played the Star-Lord deck and I got absolutely bopped. I played an element gun and an ally and I got destroyed. What did I do wrong? Um, we touched on it a little bit earlier about um, not using his discount. Not, uh, I keep forgetting the name of the ability. Uh, what could go wrong? <laughs> not finding out uh, what could go wrong too early obviously derails your entire game. But uh, the other thing is, decide who you're building up. Are you building up your aspect stuff like leadership are you getting your allies down in that case ignore your element guns ignore your your other stuff your your helmets uh and just catch them on the second the second go through or are you going to focus on building um, star lord up and then get your allies the second time or get your you know your protection upgrades if you're playing him in protection <laughs> uh just p pick one follow through and on the second cycle then do the other thing yeah, that's good advice. Mine was pretty similar. When you're building with Star-Lord, just because he has that ability to reduce something by three, don't feel like you have to jam a bunch of three-cost cards into your deck. Um, if you have, like, 15 three-cost cards, you're going to be real tempted to use that every turn. But he's already got eight in his kit. So even if you include, like, two three-cost cards from your aspects and basics, you're going to have a card every turn that you have the option to play that on anyway. So... Don't feel like you have to take three uppercuts and three drop kicks and three of something else, um, because you can get plenty of action just out of Star Lord's cards with that discount. Can um, I mention an ally that I think is really good with Star Lord? Who's that? Lockjaw. Because when he dies, you can still play him, and you can. Yeah, I, I really like Lockjaw with him because it, it gives you that option to always kind of have something to use his ability if you need to. Uh, you can't but, what could go wrong on Lockjaw from the discard. It has to be from your hand. Yeah, uh, that's right. Dang. But I agree with you. Lockjaw's good in every deck. 
Yeah, yeah. Yep. I mean, I throw him in every deck now, anyways. Um, the other thing Wait. about Star Lord is he has insane thwarting potential. Like even without Justice, if you get that leader of the Guardians down, that's all Guardian characters you control get plus one thwart. So Star Lord sitting at a base three thwart, and he's got three ready events that cost zero in his deck, and he's still got <laughs> thwart events on top of that. So I, you're going to be the asterisk on cost zero crazy. there. What was that? I could hear the asterisk on cost zero. <laughs> I mean, the resource cost is zero. You just might have to spend more resources later to clean up. That's the Greek player's problem. It was very solid. Uh, it definitely was a little scary sometimes. He's, like like uh, Americana said, he's very high risk, high reward. Just living in the fast lane. Have you guys played... Star Lord outside of leadership? No, I just no, but I wish I did. Played him in aggression, and he's pretty fun in aggression. That's where I'm going next. I I I didn't like leadership. It wasn't that fun, honestly. You get so many allies, and there's such good. This is the opposite of the advice I just gave. But there's such good three cost um, aggression (laughs) events, like the into the fray and stuff like that. That you're like, I don't care about these seven minions. They're gonna come (laughs) at me because I'm just gonna blow them all up. Who cares? Right. <laughs> um, so it's pretty fun. I really like him in aggression, um, but aggression is probably my second favorite aspect. So that's not not necessarily fair. I was just say the the aerial themed cards uh, that came in the back of his deck or the back of his pack. The the dive bomb, agile fly, and ever vigilant. I was happy with the leadership one. Um, I'm pretty happy Leader, with the, the protection. The leadership protection. one does. Oh, you're talking about in his kit. Right, which yeah, is in his deck, air supremacy. Right? We got an event yeah. for each aspect that relates to aerial. So, ever vigilant is the protection one, two cost. Play only if your identity has the aerial trait. Ready your hero and remove two threat from the main scheme. That's pretty good, right? Because you ready your hero in protection, which is great because you're exhausting a lot to defend, and this is a way to unexhaust. And the thing that you don't really have a lot of in protection is threat control, and now you've got that never vigilant, and it's not a forward action, so you can do it when confused. That's like yeah, I, I was gonna say this yeah. for for a protection deck that wants to defend that that the focus is on defend defending. This is a really good card, I think. I mean, even if you're like an awesome attacker, let's say you're Star Lord and you've got yourself up to three attacks somehow or whatever, right? You can you can attack ever vigilant and attack again. And remove two threat. That seems good. I'm happy. Yeah. 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 The other two, Agile Flight is a three cost justice event. Um, play only if your identity has the aerial trait. Remove a total of five threat among schemes as you choose. Um, not a great ratio. I mean, the versatility is cool, but it just doesn't do it for me. And it's and it's still subject to the crisis icon, right? And confuse, yeah. And then the aggression one is dive bomb, four cost events, deal seven damage to an enemy, and then one damage to each enemy, each other enemy. So that's pretty cool, but it's still a huge, huge investment. Yeah, I really like agile I, flight. Like man. I think, I think spreading five is it. It lets you key uh, set set up a lot of other moves, like clear the area or turn the tide. So, yeah, you can use it to set stuff up. My biggest problem with the Justice one is all the characters that can go aerial with their identity are really good at thwarting, right? It's it's Iron Man who can thwart for four a turn with his arc reactor, and Captain Marvel who's got Crisis Interdiction already, and Rocket. Who's crisis got a Interdiction? <laughs> Come on, that's a garbage card. No way. If you're if you're aerial already, I mean, it's it's oh, it yeah, okay, that, okay, an agile flight, aerial. and it basically does yes. the same effect, right? So I mean. Right. Yeah. At that point, what, what do you play ha- the hero one that's cheaper? What, what do you have to do to get Ariel on that? You have to wear the helmet. Is that what it is? No, you have to put her cosmic flight down, which protects damage. Oh, cosmic flight. Yeah. Okay. I'm always using that one to reduce the. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. there's no reason to stay Ariel, but now there's starting to be. Now there. Now there might be. Yeah. Maybe I'll be proved wrong in agile flight. I haven't played a ton of Ariel decks with. Um, Justice yet. I don't te- technically play a lot of Justice, so let's just move on from that topic. It's gross. Please, okay. Um, okay. I'm okay, what do you grade it? it? What do you grade it at? How do I grade this yeah. pack? Yep. Oh, this pack's a solid A. A. Theme, I think it nails. Fun, it nails. 
I mean, I've had the most fun playing Star Lord in four player games when I just go bonkers and get like five encounter cards on myself. And commonly misplayed rule. You know, when you die, if you have a bunch of minions, they go to the next player. If you have a bunch of encounter cards, they just get discarded. So sometimes I literally go down in the blaze of glory as Star Lord. And I'm like, I got seven encounter cards. It's okay. I'm going to tank for the team, but we're going to push into the next <laughs> next stage. And then I watch everybody else win. And it's still fun. But and you go get a beer. Yeah, exactly. What a deal. Plus. I need to plus for me. I'm going to call it beyond him so far. A B. Uh, yeah. I will give him. I will give him an A minus. Uh, there's a lot of leadership cards in the deck that I kind of feel. Oh no! Hear me out. I kind of <laughs> yeah. feel like with Adderkop, where I just. I mean, there's some really like target practice is an amazing uh, leadership card at zero cost support. Just I'm not huge on on leadership, so I understand why he had it. I think it's the right call. I think he's a his 15 card kit is. Very fun, uh, enticing to do the what could go wrong. I think it it works very well. I give I'm gonna give Star Lord an A as well. Uh, it's a pretty firm skater die deck, and I'm super into it. So that's just the way it is. Yep. Yeah. It's it's my play style. I'm happy. All right. That's all right. Star Lord. I'll do the Gamora overview because I've played many many Gamora games at this point and. Spoilers, I think she's amazing. She's so Gamora S, S tier has, S tier amazing. Um she she's probably gonna get a higher yeah. grade than Star Lord from me somehow. Yeah. So three recovery, six hand size, ten hit points in ultra ego form with the ability skilled tactician. You may include up to six attack and or thwart events in your deck from aspects other than your chosen aspect. And that's really cool. Outlaw traits. She also has an action. Look at the top card of your deck. If that card is an attack or thwart event, draw it. And when you're playing her, you're probably going to put a lot of those cards in your deck. So it's not as good as Captain Marvel, right? With Captain Marvel, you just draw a card. But it's going to be pretty dang close. In hero form, she has two thwart, two attack, two defense. So we know she's going to be good. The guardian trait and two abilities. Finesse, response. After you play an attack event, remove one threat from a scheme. Limit once per phase. And Precision. After you play a Thwart event, deal one damage to an enemy. Limit once per phase. So that's really cool because whatever she's doing as a main thing, right? if she's playing Uppercut, that's going to be really good at dealing damage, but you're ignoring the threat. But now she gets to do like a little ping at the threat. And same thing if you're playing For Justice. You might be thinking, well, I could just play For Justice for this entire game and like never let it finish. But she'll get that little ping damage through. And that's pretty, pretty sweet. So her entire 15 card kit is all based around that. She's got a ton of cheap attacks and thwart events. Um, some that are even attacks and thwarts. We'll talk about that. Um, but I'll just go through some of her key cards. So she does have a signature ally. Nebula is a two cost ally with two thwart, two attack, and two health. Response. After Nebula enters play, search your deck for an attack or thwart event and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. So she's basically Shuri, but for the type of card that Gamora wants, Instead of the type of card Black Panther wants. Is there a downside to this ally? Besides the <laughs> fact that you might have to discard her like very rarely? Yeah, playing against the Nebula uh, villain. But yeah, no, against the Nebula no villain, you couldn't play her. And Gamora's nemesis is Nebula as well. Spoilers. Um, so, so if you. What happens when Shadows you need... of the Past? I think the interrupt on the Nebula minion forces your Nebula in play to be discarded. It sure does. Damn. Has that happened to you? Um, nope. No. Okay. I kill things so, before Shadows of the Past. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I think that that card's amazing. But oh, it's it's good. It's one of the reasons I like Black Panther is because Shuri's so strong and Nebula is like Shuri but cheaper and with or maybe the same cost. I can't remember. But either way, she has better same stats. Cost. Yeah, better stats. Yeah, she dies really quickly. You get her in. You deal two. You have a blocker, and that's it. You yeah. get everything. And it's when she enters play, so um, other people can make the call her and steal that ability too. Or if you rapid response her, if you're playing leadership, and you took those attack board events from other aspects, you can just get that to trigger over and over again. Gosh, so many cool combos. So fun. Okay. She's got four zero-cost events. Two of them are acrobatic move. It's a hero action attack that just deals two damage to an enemy. But when you're Gamora, it's also going to remove a threat from a scheme. Two of them are set the pace. It's a hero action thwart. Remove one threat from a scheme. But when you're Gamora, you're also going to deal damage. 
So those cards are, I feel like a lot of times when I'm playing Gamora, I'm just playing so many cards out of my hand because I'm trying to trigger both of her abilities that it feels like a combo fighter game, right? I'm trying to like get into the combo moves, uppercut, and then bang, hit the villain. So I really enjoyed that. Um, one of our other events that we should mention is Cross Counter. It's an attack defense thwart. So it's traded with all three and it has the tag for all three. When you would take any amount of damage, prevent three of that damage, deal one damage to an enemy, and remove one threat from a scheme. So if you play this, you get to trigger both of her abilities, so you'd actually deal two damage and remove two threat. Um, but one of the threats, yeah, it's from any scheme. So, like, pretty pretty bonkers good. I She's love that card. That, cross counter's just so oh, good. That sold me on her, right there. That card. That card alone, huh? <laughs> yeah. She's got four two-cost events that are amazing, and this is where the combo fighter comes in, right? Let's say you play, played that set the pace, which was a zero-cost, remove one threat from a scheme, and then you pinged tough off the villain, and then you decided to play decisive blow. For two-cost, hero action, deal four damage to an enemy. That sounds kind of bad. Oh, wait. Deal seven damage instead if you've already played a thwart event this turn. Two for seven. Just, like, let that sink in. Two for seven damage. Oh, and then at the end, you get to remove a threat because it's an attack event. Um, and she's got the foil of that for thwarting, too. It's remove three threat from a scheme, or if you've played an attack event, remove five for two. That's, like, S-tier behavior. She's got the generic or resource generators. I'm, I'm guessing that you'll be able to guess that they work with attack and thwart events. And she's got, you know, a support that makes you want to go to Ultra Ego every once in a while, just like everybody does. But likely, you're going to stay in hero form and just smash face constantly. She only has one card that costs three or more, Gamora's Sword. After you play an attack event, deal a damage to an enemy. So it, like, doubles up one of her, like, basic abilities, which is bonkers good. Yeah, so the sword is really strong. Like, at first I wasn't sure on it, but because it costs three, it is rather expensive. But it did work when it hit the, pl in, hit the ground. The, the one card, like, so Conditioning Room is, is really good. That art is so bad, it makes me not want to play it. And it's comic art. Isn't that sad? Of all the art they could have picked. Yeah, I'm hey, like, that's... comic art from, like, the 30s. No, that's, that's Adam Cooter. That's a pretty recent art. He's, uh, he's a pretty good artist. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig my heels in on this one. <laughs> I, 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 I I'm, he's a I'm good not. artist. I just think the art in the card's not very good. I'm not a comic book uh, guy, so... Sure, but I just I'm like I, I look at that and I'm like no that 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 does not work for me. Who's who's the artist in Keen Instincts? Because I'm I'm into that style. Yeah, yeah, that that's good art. Keen Instincts. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but I could know by tomorrow. I'm sure. <laughs> Perfect. Sounds good. I was gonna say Gamora's sword. Like you're trying to play attack events. Like that's your goal. So that's an amazing card. It doesn't not How many, it, 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 Yeah, it's not like you don't have to exhaust it or anything. So, nah. so you can mean swinger and stuff. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it, it's worth getting that sword, you know, taking a turn and doing a setup turn to get that sword out. She's got those zero cost events. You might get the sword out and get to use it that turn. And all this event action, right, doesn't even use her basic ability. So she can still thwart for two, attack for two, or defend for two every round. Her, her yeah. two stat lines are amazing, too. Oh my gosh. She's she the perfect. comes with. Oh, go for it. I was going to say, she's the most balanced character we have. Like, obviously, they're designed her that way, but. I don't I mean, know but if she's she, very she, balanced. She's pretty strong. Yeah, but. yeah she is. Well, <laughs> well. In, in, I mean, thwarting and attacking, but she wants, I mean, they built her so she wants to attack more than necessarily yeah. thwart. Yep. And she really reminds me of a different Black Panther. Um, that, that's the vibes that I get from when I play her. You know, Black Panther wants to Voltron, she wants to combo, but with events instead of supports. Oh, see, upgrade. I saw her as like a different alternative to Miss Marvel. Um, the Miss Marvel bouncing at events and having to pay for it twice has never really appealed to me, but I really enjoy playing an event and then being incentivized to it and getting Ooh. like an extra bonus, right? Usually everybody cries that allies are too strong, but now we finally have a hero that makes events maybe not as strong as allies, but at least makes them more enjoyable to play, and that's great. I'm sorry, who's this Miss Marvel are you talking about? Yeah, we're I was going to say, we have a lot of fans, a lot of listeners that are going to be like, 
Man, you guys really hate on Miss Marvel. Let's just give us another reason. This just gave us another I just reason. It didn't work for me. Other people can <laughs> enjoy her play style. Hey, I'd I like know to people spend extra money on events that are boring, and I'll play Gamora. <laughs> Dang, I know. Yep, <laughs> I'm there, man. I'm there. So, can we okay. want to chime in on this? What? So no. Okay. Yeah. Oh, on on Miss Marvel. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have any. Um, I haven't. I've played her maybe twice total. Okay. Well, you'll fit right in. You fit right in here. So. Yeah. The problem is she came out when Cap came out, and then I was just like, "Why even play it's Marvel? <laughs> I have Cap." That's just what I. That's what I say every time a new release comes out. So, so of, I. It's hard to like choose a card that you like the most, right? Because they all work so well together. I really like the combo of like the zero cost events into the two cost events. Um, because all the two-cost events get, like, a bonus if you played one, an event of the other type beforehand. So for, like, if you have that zero-cost and two-cost event in your hand, you're paying two cards on top of that. So for five cards, that's her whole hand size. You can do, like, nine damage and four threat removal or something. It's... I love the, I love the zero-cost and the two-cost events. I'm not crazy about the... Um, Oh gosh, I guess I'm crazy about all of them. I'm not crazy about Keen Instincts because it's just a resource generator. But it's a cheap one. I know, but it's one. good, right? Come on. Yeah, versus That's like so... <laughs> Superhuman Soldier or Serum, which costs two. This will only cost one. I'm not keen about the fact that I enjoy playing her as much as Hawkeye. That's unacceptable. <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe uh, I, I should have been. I really like the sword, and I really like Cross Count. Those, those cards really just... Did it for me. Here, I got, I, mean, a, I got a mind puzzle for you. Let's say I'm Gamora, and I am confused and stunned, and I want to play cross counter. What happens? Ooh, you discard. Wow, would you not discard both? I, I don't you know. One. I have no idea. I would yeah. play it has, as there, you has there been a ruling both. on that? No, there hasn't yet. Yeah, I would play it as you discard both, and that would also work with hit and run, which is also an attack and a thwart. Yeah. Um, I you, I would rule that you. Lose both because the um, status cards are like replacement effects. So I don't know if it yeah. gets replaced. Can you still get rid of the other one? Anyway, I submitted a rules question. We'll find out someday. I'm playing it as you only get rid of one, but you pick which one for now. So, we'll but see. then, but then you don't you don't get the well. Is it uh, what happens to the card though? Then you don't trigger the like the effect on the card doesn't happen, Nothing. right? And the whole the whole ability's got to be canceled, right? So right. that's the nice thing about attack thwart defense events or whatever, right? They can they can cancel any status card. So if you're confused and you have a bunch of attack events in hand, if one of them's an attack slash thwart, you can use to clear confused. But they're also like susceptible to all status conditions, right? If you really needed to deal damage and you were confused and that was your only option, you'd be like, well, this sucks because confused is going to cancel my attack still. No, you, you just thwart with her. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I, I I would play the same way where it knocks off one of the uh, the symbols, but you get to choose. Like that's the compromise. I guess that's like grim ruling. Uh, Nebula still getting her uh, triggers even if she's stunned or confused. Yeah, exactly. But um, uh, a little faster than tomorrow, uh, Americano. That's a uh, that's Marco Cicchetto, which I should have known faster. Um, he's doing the art for Daredevil right now, and it's just as good. So if you're at all Oof. interested in, in Daredevil, um, jump on uh, board. He's my favorite. He's my. He... I don't know if you know that. He's my favorite superhero. So, Well, the, the current Daredevil run is really, 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 really good. I can't recommend it enough. Oh, yes. So, have a good time. God, I wish I had I as I much tonight. time as other people to read comics. I just don't have the time. You gotta, you gotta make that time. See, here's the thing. You just don't sleep and you read comics. And yeah, I mean, if you... I work 10 hours and then I, I stream oh. for th three or four and I'm like, bed. I just read the comic um, with the hit and run art on it, or from that comic, what was that one? I just finished that, that one. Is it Angela? Yes. There you go. What was that? What so, was I reading? I don't remember. Was it? It was the Guardians. What, which one was it? I think you recommended that one too. Mm. One of the Guardians runs. That would be the Bendis run. I probably wouldn't have recommended it. <laughs> you didn't recommend yeah. it. Gross. Get out of here. 
Now, Gamora comes with some other cards that I think are really exceptional. Speaking of Angela, yeah. Uh, I, I actually really love first, her. First hit. Yeah. Th that is a very much needed card for protection. So what first hit does is it costs one. It's an event. It's protection. It is an attack event. Hero action attack. Deal two damage to a villain. Her hero interrupt attack. When a minion initiates attack, deal two damage to that minion. Now the interesting thing is it says when the minion initiates the attack. So the two damage would happen before the minion actually finishes his attack. So if it does kill the minion, you do not take the damage. Yep, just like Nova. It's a great card. This might be the first time we have something where like it's got two different abilities on it and they have different like play timings or triggering conditions. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. versatile. I, I, I think really it's awesome. more. But I really think protection needed this this card. Um the the other card obviously is the yellow card in there. Protection didn't need anything. Come on. Yeah. Um mm. <laughs> needed I, I needed the RRG one point four. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna try to say impede. So impede is a cost two event thwart, hero action thwart, remove three threat from the main scheme. If this is the first card you played this round, return this card to your hand. What I think this card is a card that I would put in another hero that's going to be coming up where you can only have one of each card because it allows you to have this card multiple times throughout the game. Yep. Um, I, I think this is decent. It, now, is it as good as For Justice? Probably not, but maybe in the long run. Yeah, I'd argue it's better than the aggression one, right? There's there's an aggression version of that. Two cost clobber, deal three damage to an enemy. This is the first card, return it to your hand. Um, but threat is usually more highly costed than damage. So the yeah. fact that they're the same cost gives a slight edge to impede. But they're both, I think, pretty fun cards to play. Yeah, I would have liked clobber better at four damage. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy plan of attack. Um, I've been playing a lot of... Hawkeye decks that may or may not use Godslayer um, and Hawkeye's Bow and Plan of Attack to pull the right arrows out at the right time. So Plan of Attack is a zero-cost event. Search the top four cards of your deck or top seven if you're in Ultra Ego form for an attack event, add it to your hand, and then shuffle your deck. I was gonna, um, yeah, I was going to say, that's a really cool ability. That's a really yeah, cool ability. I really and am happy that they gave us a card that finally like encourages us to go to alter ego beyond that like one support or one ability in your hero kit. Mm -hmm. Um I think that that's really, really, really cool for an aspect. Yeah. And it's at the right cost too. Yeah. Right. It's a <laughs> it's a tutor that doesn't search your whole deck, right? It's not Nebula or Shuri that also comes with an ally body, which is insane. But I mean if you're searching seven cards of your deck in Alter Ego form and you've got six cards in your hand, you're probably gonna find something. It's gonna be very rare that you I say that now. Next time I play this, I'm gonna find the event <laughs> multiple times. Yes. So um, we talked about God Slayer a couple times. Here's what it does: it costs three. It's an upgrade. It is a weapon restricted. It is unique. Um, hero interrupt. When your hero makes a basic attack against a unique enemy, exhaust God Slayer. Your hero gets plus two attack for this attack. It's not plus two for the rest of the round. It's just for the attack. But that is an incredible little card. Especially when you think of all the other things that you can use with it. Um, you know, any kind of, uh, just having a weapon is super good. Uh, imagine like running this and like you said, Hawkeye's bow. It's just, it's really good. I might be wrong. I just, I don't like it. I think I'd rather have um, the, uh, the hand cannon out. Um, just in general. Right, like it's it's one cheaper. It is limited, but it gives you plus three and overkill, and it's against anything. Yeah, but it depends on it. what your role is, right? If you're playing a multiplayer yeah. and you're just like the villain killer, it's totally good because almost all I think all the villains are unique right now. Mm -hmm. um, it is restricted, and the thing I don't like about it is you have to exhaust it, right? So you can't use mean swing with it. And I don't think we mentioned this, but in Star Lord's deck, there's like a basic weapon he comes with the best use for that weapon is to just get it on the field and then mean swing with it every turn because it 
never goes away and it's not restricted. So you're just mean swinging with this grenade. But anyway, that's what I've been doing with Hawkeye is I get God Slayer out, I get the bow out. I can pretty much swing for six to seven a turn, depending on if I have mean swing or if I have uh, skilled strike. And then on top of that, I play an arrow. I'm pretty happy with that. I don't know if I didn't I'll realize that it worked that way. You don't know if you'll ever play another deck, is that what you said? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and don't get me wrong. Yes, I think it would have been better if it did not exhaust itself, if it just had a, a limit once per round instead of an exhaust. But I, th- I still think it's, it's very solid it, for, for my play styles. Um, I thought the Drax ally was pretty standout. We got another basic Guardian ally. Three cost, one thwart, three attack. Play only if your identity has the Guardian trait, unless you want to make the call. Four health. Drax cannot attack minions. So he's shut down pretty hard by guard, but three cost for 12 damage or nine damage and a block. I am okay yeah, with. I'm, I'm super into it. It's so on theme, too. Like He's not going to waste his time with the little guys. He's going to jump over them. <laughs> and the art is just amazing. I like the art in that one. I would have liked it if he had an ability that said he ignores guard. Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah. I mean, that would be really good, too. It would be the the theme, you know? He jumps over the the little guys. Cosmic Implant's probably one of my favorite other backup cards. I really like the leadership card in this deck. I think it is very similar to Inspired, but serves a different purpose. It's got tech trait, so that's awesome. Attached to a guardian ally, max one per ally. The attached ally gets plus one thwart and plus one hit point. So that went right in my Star-Lord deck immediately. Did, you throw, Iron, did you throw Iron Man in your Star-Lord deck? I did, and Iron Man has been a guardian in that horrible <laughs> Bendis run that we don't talk about on here. Oh, yeah. The suit, his suit was really cool in that run. To be It was. Star-Lords um, or Iron Man's? Not, Iron Man's. Uh, Iron Man's. I'm not intentionally harping on it, but how do you guys feel about the art for Drax? Like, I, I mean, we mentioned it a little bit, but everybody likes the art for Drax. Yeah, I like I the art for Kennedy Drax. said, "What if I told you that was also Aaron Cooter who did the art for that Gamora card?" What? How? I would tell you I knew that because I read this comic, but yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I know it's shocking, right? Yeah. Is it like super zoomed in on that Gamora card, or what? Like, it is super zoomed in. It's a it's a small panel. It's probably like one twelfth of the page. Okay, but even then, sense, then, you can see Cooter's art in like the structure of the the training thing, but it's a little diluted because it's small. Like I said, I don't mean to harp on it. I'm just I'm just pointing out that like Cooter does like really cool stuff. So I don't want you to like think that he does like really corny stuff. All right, you'll you'll uh, put a link in our Discord, right? So I can go read one. Yeah, sure, definitely, I can do that. Any other standout cards from Gamora's kit or play tips for playing Gamora? Uh, My biggest play tip is cheap cards. You want to make sure you're triggering both her abilities every turn if you can, and you're mainly going to do that by having lots of cheap attacks and thwarts. So clear the areas, things like that are really fun. And definitely take advantage of her ability to include six things out of aspect. You can play a leadership deck and bring six thwart events with you or six cheap attack events and that's going to just give you an entirely different play style so does everybody have a card like the first like when you're out of aspect what is the first card that you reach for is there one that you're like even if i'm playing this I, this is one of my six cards what were the first ones that come into mind i guess clear the area clear the area yeah but you're playing her with justice aren't you <laughs> yeah you're right i think relentless <laughs> assault um, cheap attack event serves a purpose. You get to remove a threat and kill a minion and hit the villain all with one card. Super fun. What about momentum shift? I've played a game with her where I took three first hits and three momentum shifts as my out of um, aspect cards, and it was super fun. So yeah, I think it's really really good for her as a character, and it lets her keep rolling, but like to not be afraid. Well, I guess when we get to the strategy part, we'll talk about that, but. Yeah, I think I think momentum shift for me. Well, let's let's well, do the strategy stuff right now. What's your strategy tips, Adercat? Oh, uh, don't be afraid to flip down to heal um, or to exhaust to defend. So, like a lot of her leverage just comes from her events. So you don't really need her basic um, attacks. They're or basic um, basic thwarting, basic attacking because like 
the extra two is really just two. You need to be able to play events and also to stay alive. So don't be afraid to do either. Yep. And and be greedy as Gamora. Um, we finally have a green hero who has a hero hand size of five and take advantage of that. <laughs> like, get as many cards as your hand as you can. Anytime oh. someone has a mansion, you just say, I could change the world if you gave me that mansion. And even if you don't, they won't know because you'll still play three or four cards and they don't have to know what you drew. So take all the cards you can take all the card draw you can in her deck because the bigger you can get her deck or her hand the the, the better you're going to be um my question for you is do you play her instead of star lord who do you choose well it's a good question it depends on who i'm playing with i think in solo i'd much rather play gamora than star lord um my solo Star Lord games have not always turned out to be so great, but when I have someone there to take care of all my counter cards for me, Star Lord's just rocking and rolling. So I'm more of a Gamora style player. I think I uh, I I like Gamora slightly better than Star Lord, but I still really enjoy Star Lord. So I think that these are they're probably in my top five heroes, both of them, and that could just be Cult of the New, but I didn't Meh. feel that way for Rocket and Groot. So take it with what you will. I really like Gamora because of the game of inches feel. Like, you know, you have a bunch of cards in your hand that cost zero or one, and you're like, all right, this does two, this does three, this does a follow up attack, you know? And if you execute the combo, like you mentioned earlier with the fighting, the fighting game mode, it's like super satisfying. You're like, okay, I did, I did 10 or I did 12 and I thwarted five or six. I, I spotted the justice player or I kept it under control as a pseudo justice player, you know, with all the extra thwarting. So pretty pretty good. Oh man. I was gonna go read some comics tonight, but now I'm gonna go play Gamora. Or <laughs> as you should. Do both. That's what I do. Or or do both, yeah. Well, let's give Gamora her grade. I think everybody knows what's probably gonna happen here, but I'm giving Gamora a shining A plus. I think that there are one there's one thing I don't like about both these hero packs, and I bet you can guess what it is. There's not enough of them? Well, no, there's more than enough of them. The problem is that they gave us enhanced reflexes and enhanced awareness again. Boo. Yeah, I, was, <laughs> I was not a big fan of reprints being in the backup cards that aren't even in the hero's deck. At least throw them in the hero's deck so it makes me think you're like trying to make the pre-con like, have good economy. Instead, I get a card that provides a resource type that doesn't require matching for anything in the entire deck for either hero. And that was a bummer for me, at least. That was what that does. That did seem a little lazy. But uh, maybe you know, it's it can be hard to design. I, I an get entire the I get the idea, pack, right? right? It's, each pack is like pick up and go. So if you own just the core set, maybe you skip the first wave because you were learning the core set. You wouldn't have those cards. But you say, oh, I really love the Guardians movies. I'm going to get this cycle. So you pick up Star Lord's pack with the core set. He comes with enhanced awareness. Just with the core set and that, you can now use Enhanced Awareness with Black Widow. You can use it with Iron Man to fuel his aerial, which also comes in Star-Lord's pack. Um, you can use it um, in a Spider-Man deck, because Black Cat will draw it when she discards it from your deck. So, including it makes sense for people that don't buy everything, right? But as a player that buys potentially multiple copies of everything, I really don't need 12 copies of Enhanced Awareness. So, I would have rather just had, like... Three more, like, I would have rather had a reprint of the Rocket and Groot allies from the Galaxy's Most Wanted box, personally. But that's my gripe. They still get an A and an A+, plus, so clearly it didn't bother me that much. Yeah, I, I think I give it I give it more an A+, plus too, just because, like, it's well-designed, it's fun to play, um, and it's it's thematic, honestly. Like, it just, it hits all the marks. It's It's perfect. Yeah. Anybody I'm, else got grades? Yeah. I'm A plus to S. I, I think I, I think she's more leaning towards S at some point for me. I didn't know S was an option. Okay, I'm going yeah, S I plus. I didn't know that was an option <laughs> either. <laughs> you can grade it whatever you want. I'm gonna whatever you want. That on my students' papers, S plus and see which one of them are <laughs> to get it. I mean, come <laughs> on. Be like, what? We put both Captain America and um, 
uh, Doctor Strange as an S tier. That's true. S tier, S tier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're damn right. Because you, you love America. I think that <laughs> Gamora is probably the most fun and best design hero since Black Widow. I think Black Widow's pack. I don't really, I don't even know if Black Widow's pack tops Gamora, but like when Black Widow's pack came out and I started playing Black Widow against things, I was just like, this is like the most solid release ever. If someone has the core set and they're like, what should I buy? I'm going to say you should go buy Black Widow because you're going to enjoy whatever happens. And I think I would say the same thing for Gamora in this cycle so far. Like if people were saying, I'm going to pick up one Guardian, who should I get? I would say go get Gamora and then get another copy and then buy the rest of the cycle because you're going to enjoy it so much. <laughs> I'd agree. I, I think a last point that I want to make about both heroes is that they are both kind of squishy with like low defense and 10 HP, which is which is still I guess decent compared to like Black Widow. But um, I think if you're still the kind of player that adds endurance and downtime to every deck, um, not that there's anything wrong with that. That's just that's insurance. But I think they both benefit a lot from downtime. Um, and a little bit less from endurance, but, but it's because they're both so incentivized to flip down to alter ego and get a couple extra miles out of it. Like Gamora getting the extra cards, and uh, Star Lord also getting the extra cards, and like kind of saving cards for later. Um, they both want to be an alter ego more often. So keep in mind that that downtime is is a lot. Of, it's it's half their health if you if you slap it on them, right? Or is it more? Is downtime two or three? Oh, it's two, so I think it gets to half their health, yeah. Yeah, so it heals half of your health for one activation, and that's, that's enough to bring it back, especially for somebody that's gambling a lot like Star-Lord. Yeah, I found Gamora I didn't have to flip a ton with. I mean, I would do it just for the extra card draw, but with the counter... What is it? Now I can't even remember. Cross-counter. Cross-counter, and um, with her like innate two defense, I could just pretty much tank most hits... Until I got to Ronin, and then I just cried and stopped playing. Um, <laughs> and it went well. I don't know. I, I think Gamora's solid. Yeah, I agree. They're pretty squishy. But maybe I'm just used to playing squishy Hawkeye heroes. Um, I think you are. And not afraid to recover and let everybody else deal with this. It's okay. Get in your car and drive away. I'll be back later. <laughs> oh, man. Did we mention Angela at all? No, we didn't, but we didn't. I think she's a great well, card. Well, we talked about her, but not the card. Oh, yeah. man, she's she's so good. Like, she's so, like, on point for the character, and f not that we, like, not that there is an Asgardian archetype, but it's so perfect for Thor because of his small hand size. You get a, you get a free ally that gets you a couple cards that also gives you an ally. Like, <laughs> how about that? So, oh. you said there's not an Asgardian card, uh, deck type, but it kind of seems like there is, right? All the Asgard cards or heroes kind of deal with minions, right? Even Beta Ray Bill has that Asgard trait, and he's like, when I defeat a minion, also do this other thing. So That's true. Ang Angela being able to fish out a minion, Valkyrie dealing damage to minions as like another Asgard thing. Like, they, they got something going on there. What does Jane Foster do? She deals damage to the villain if the villain, you pay a yeah. physical or something. But I don't and think she has the where? Asgard trait. Or no, she does. They gave her it to her, didn't they? Yeah, and then Heimdall um, manipulates the top of the deck, which is yeah. On so you can set up those decks. minions. You're good to go. So you can find the minions faster. Am I clear to look for minions? I am clear. Here we go. <laughs> well, Gamora, Star Lord, giant, roaring success as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Very also, good. Also, I really like the dual hero pack release. This might not be what other people would agree with, but if they released heroes every six weeks instead of every four and they just popped out two, or even if it was like every seven weeks or eight weeks, I'm not super excited about two months of nothing. But releasing two at a time is just so much more fun than one at a time, especially once stores start to open back up. I remember when packs were coming out before the pandemic, like a new pack would come out and our groups would get together and everybody wants to play the new hero or the new hero's aspect, right? But when you release two packs like this, like everybody gets new toys to play with, and I think that's super cool. So I think I about that, yeah. I really enjoyed having two packs come out at once because my wife and I could both play the precon decks, and then when we went to do constructed decks, we could like all have cards to pick from. It's not like just the leadership player got new things to do. So I really, really liked the the two pack release. Can we write a letter? 
I'll write a strongly worded letter of approval. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for today's show. If you want to chat with us some more, you can hop onto our Discord. We've got lots of action going on in there. We're always asking people what sort of heroes we should play or stream on our YouTube channel. So we're in the middle of a Galaxy's Most Wanted run with the two Hulks. Wait. Today's battle did not go so well. So, Galaxy's Most Wanted. Yeah, Galaxy's Most Wanted. Yes. Um, we, <laughs> we may have dug a little bit too far into the library labyrinth and had a turn where we had eight encounter cards between the two Hulks. It was not a great day. It's not scary um, if you don't count, which Hulk cannot do. So... She Hulk should be able to count. I'm just saying. She, yeah, she definitely can. That's really unfortunate for her. <laughs> All right. Until next time. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one, guys.